This was all my doing. All this death and suffering stems from one act of lust. It was an act of betrayal. I was married for 12 years. We were happy. I just wanted more. So I started going out. I'd tell her I was working late or hanging out with a friend. But that was all lies. Not even well-constructed lies, just poor excuses to spend a couple hours with the girlfriend of the week. I kept this up for years. Until I met her. She was naive. An 18-year-old girl with a crush on an older man. Unfortunately, I was naive too. I didn't realize she'd fallen in love with me. Or at least she thought she did. At that age? Who knows? It seems like time is making fools of us again. I was careful and used a condom with every girl. I wouldn't have been able to explain an STD to my wife. But my seed lived inside the latex. And after I left one night, she impregnated herself. The next time we were together, she let me know. I can still hear her saying, Now, now we, we can, can be, be together, together forever. forever. She said a lot that night. She'd already picked out names. She had our whole lives planned out. I sat speechless the entire time she talked. She thought I was listening, but I was really contemplating my whole life and the choices I'd made. And when I finally spoke, I was only able to say four words. Get rid of it. Rid of it. Rid of it. Rid of it. I stood up and left, and I never saw her again. I tried to put it behind me, but I thought about her every day. And then I killed her. Her gun, her bullet, her finger, her temple. I may not have pulled the trigger, but make no mistake, I killed her. A week after her death, I got a call from the cops. They had some questions for me. They took my number from her phone. The text messages and Facebook conversations told it all. So I complied. I told them everything, everything, every last detail. The cops believed me. They never charged me or even made me feel guilty. No, they left all the guilt and blame to the newspapers that sensationalized the story. The media vilified me and showed me to be the monster that I'd become. That's when my wife left me. I never came clean to her. I never had the chance. I came home one day and she was gone. She took my kids and left almost everything else. My daughters were ten and eight. My ten-year-old wrote me to let me know that they were okay. They moved to another state and started at new schools. My wife got a job and moved them into a trailer. She took three jobs to support the girls. So she was never home, and with no one to watch them, my girls didn't have any rules. My older daughter got caught up in drugs and alcohol. She got pregnant at 16, but lost the baby, most likely due to her drug use. Then... My younger daughter died of an overdose. I hadn't seen her in eight years. 
I was so ashamed that I just secluded myself and never tried to fix things. Two weeks later, my older daughter disappeared. They found her remains in a ditch. If I'd been around, she might still be alive. Maybe they'd both be alive. My wife quickly deteriorated. I reached out to comfort her, but she wouldn't accept my calls, and my letters came back marked return to sender. I didn't even find out about her death until after the funeral. So here I sit, with six deaths on my conscience. Two unborn babies with no chance at life. Two beautiful daughters who didn't deserve the hands they were dealt. I lost my wife of 12 years. And I killed an innocent 18-year-old girl whose only mistake was not seeing the monster behind the facade. One act of lust, of betrayal, led to the death of all these girls. If I had just been the man I'd always envisioned myself being, none of this would have happened. Seven dead people and only one of them guilty. Here's the solution. Here's how you kill a monster. <laughs>